Hey there folks, what say we take a moment and talk a bit about the possible future of video gaming hardware, since there have been quite a few upsets, if you will, in the last couple of weeks. The biggest one you're probably aware of is the announcement of the RTX line of video cards from Nvidia, the 2000 series that is currently composed of the 2070, the 2080 and the 2080Ti. They are video cards that include ray tracing, in the sense that they have dedicated hardware that is meant to handle ray tracing as well as some tensor cores that are used for machine learning. They are purposely built to do one job and do it well, do one operation, and that operation is used to train a system that will learn things, like how to compensate for the fact that we're really not there yet in terms of the actual hardware we need to make ray tracing proper. And they are expensive. There has been a price increase since the last generation that is quite noticeable. Now, some have defended this by saying that the current TI card that we have is actually meant to replace the Titan of the previous generation, to which I say, okay, that's not the only one that is currently very expensive, they all are. But that's just one side of the equation that we'll get back to in a moment. The other bit is something that happened on Monday, and I'm not sure if it's been actually fully covered by the tech media on YouTube, because it's not something that they can, you know, um, really exemplify, which is why in the background you're probably seeing Overwatch, I guess, and not some actual examples of what I'm talking about. Global Foundries has decided to stop developing their 7 nanometer process. This is important. For those who are not aware, Global Foundries is a semiconductor manufacturer. It used to be AMD, in the sense that these were the plants that AMD used to make their chips up until the year 2009, when the company had some problems financially and decided to spin off this division into its own company and thus stay afloat. Global Foundries since then has still been the main manufacturer of AMD processors. Everything from the Phenoms to the recent Ryzen's, they've all been made at Global Foundries. And one of the things that was really going to make the next generation really truly stand out was the jump to 7 nanometer. And I'm gonna have to explain what that is for the people who may not be fully aware of what that means. 7 nanometer refers to a really vague measurement of a feature set or a distance between some features of a microprocessor or any semiconductor that is made there. It is more of a marketing term, but it is still accurate enough to its previous generation so that you can expect the 7 nanometer process to be about half the size-ish of the 14 nanometer one. Now, the smaller the process is, the smaller the transistors are, the more tightly packed together they are, the more of them can be put on the same size of chip, which leads to better performance. It leads to better efficiency because there is less loss. There's simply not a lot of places where the electrons can go. There's not as much leakage. And in general, shrinks is how we've gotten better performance out of the last couple of years. Architectures have not really improved. Well, there has been the huge jump in performance between Bulldozer and Ryzen, but that's because Bulldozer was in some cases worse than Phenom. Well, Phenom 2, I mean. I can't remember the exact architecture that Phenom 2 was based on the last ones. Die Shrinks is how Intel has managed to continuously improve upon performance. Up until they hit the 14 nanometer wall. They broke through it, and now they've hit the 10 nanometer wall and they have not broken through it. Now, it may sound like 10 nanometer is worse than 7. It may not be. They have different ways of measuring, and I believe that their 10 nanometer may actually be a bit better than what Global Foundries was wanting to do with uh, their 7 nanometer. Was wanting. That's not maybe the correct term, the correct phrasing. But they're not doing it anymore. The company has announced that it will stop developing the process. They won't do 7 nanometer. They won't go under it. Well, they may go under it, at 7 sometime in the far future when they're not bleeding money constantly because uh, maintaining a fab 
which is what the plant, the production line is called, is quite expensive and building a new process is also very expensive. Expanding your production for that process is monumentally expensive, especially since you won't have a lot of clients since your global foundries you don't have necessarily the greatest reputation in the world but that is besides the point they will in the future license technology from tsmc or samsung maybe for a seven nanometer for five or for something else or they may go out of business because at this point they have lost their main client amd now amd will still make chips at those plants on the 12 nanometer process which is a small refinement of the 40 nanometer one but when all its technology Technology will pass on to the 7 nanometer process, they will have no more ties to global foundries. The company is hoping to remain afloat by offering a, well, kind of refined 12 nanometer process for emerging markets, for Internet of Things stuff. Uh, they also have a um, fully depleted silicon on insulator process that offers some advantages in terms of uh, actual reduction in leakages in terms of power. And they're going to be used mostly for things like embedded devices and the internet of horrible things and hopefully that will let it keep afloat and if it doesn't well global foundries may go boof unless it gets bought out by somebody else i know that intel doesn't really have currently enough production pipeline for its own chips but that would mean that they would need to retool global foundries to their technology which would cost probably as much as making a new fab well they already have the clean room so no not as much but that's maybe going a bit too much eel about the situation the point of the matter is that amd is no longer using or will no longer use global foundries for its chips which brings us to an interesting situation in the past global foundries has been blamed for the fact that some amd chips were not all that efficient the processes on which global foundries built them were not necessarily the most refined that is what the accusations used to say not in the case of the 12 or the 40 well the 14 one kind of but the 12 one that was actually kind of efficient enough instead of global foundries amd has switched to tsmc that is taiwan semiconductor manufacturing company it is the biggest company of this type in the world they have their stuff down to a t amd has already been making chips with them in the semi custom component all the xbox chips and the playstation chips are made there and now everything else will be as well nvidia chips are also made there there will no longer be any sort of disparity in terms of the quality of the production of the chips themselves between amd and nvidia now there still may be some issues with packaging because Vega was kind of a clusterfunk. Not just because, according to rumors, that sound kind of believable day by day, Raja Kuduri's Vega architecture was shoved down the stairs, basically, so that AMD can focus mostly on building Navi specifically for the PlayStation 5. The rumor states that engineers were taken away from Vega, resources were taken away from Vega, and it then kind of makes sense why Rasha Kuduri, who is a man that has been with Radeon, well, he did have a stint at Apple, I think, but he's been with Radeon, with ADI, with AMD for decades. It makes sense why he would jump ship right after he was actually put in charge of the Radeon Technologies Group, which is now sort of no longer its own individual thing like it used to be. Before Ryzen, there was the rumor that AMD may actually sell off RTG to make enough money to sustain itself. It could not sell itself like completely to somebody else because of the patent licensing agreement between AMD and Intel which is not transferable meaning that whoever bought amd could no longer make processors just the gpus and if that's all they can do then why not just the radian well they're not selling radian anymore but they're sort of bringing it back more closer to the core company and it's focusing currently according to the rumors again this is nothing confirmed but it kind of sounds a bit too believable to not be true it's focused a bit more on what the semi custom component is doing making purposefully built hardware for somebody else technically polaris was kind of built for apple as well 
what would it be a major feature in their iMac line, I think. The important thing to take note of is that on the graphics side, AMD is currently in an unknown state. This year they've had nothing. A TSMC 7 nanometer Vega will be out at the end of the year, but that will be only for machine learning, for enterprise use, you know, for the stuff that we don't actually use a video card for. I don't, I'm not even sure if those things have ports. They're in the Instinct line. But that raises a very important question. What is AMD doing with the graphics? We don't know. The rumor states that they are purposely building the Navi to fit Sony specifications for the PlayStation 5. And they've been doing that for some time. But will they have something to counter NVIDIA's RTX ray tracing technology? Technology? And the answer is, I have no clue. I don't know if Navi will have dedicated ray tracing components, if it needs them, or if it can do ray tracing in any way, shape, or form. They have shown the Pro line, the Radeon Pro, the uh, CAD design, the computer aided design cards, capable of using ray tracing and computer aided design, but nothing in real time. They do have a renderer in the works, I think it's open source and you can take a look at it, but there's no tangible thing yet in terms of video games. So that raises a couple of issues. If the following are true, AMD is making Navi for the PlayStation 5 and the Navi does not have ray tracing components, does ray tracing have a chance to actually be something that people use? Well, no. Yeah, I know that on the PC side, AMD graphics are really down right now in terms of percentage, in terms of market share. They are a blip on the radar, they're non-existent. They shot up a bit with the 400 series and then three years of nothing, they shot back down. But if Navi is the PlayStation 5's GPU, that's a big portion of the market that will not have ray tracing built in, in terms of hardware capability. So in that possibility, ray tracing is maybe not going to take off. It's going to be sort of at the same level as physics is right now. You know, AJA physics, NVIDIA physics, it's in some games, it's never factored in or properly used ever in any game. The um, GPU accelerated one, I mean the, the CPU accelerated one, which is ostensibly worse than the GPU one, can be used by anybody. It's sort of like Havoc in a way. It's, it's licensable, it's usable, independent of hardware. It's also not that great. The GPU one would work and the GPU one doesn't actually require NVIDIA GPU to work. The moment that NVIDIA bought iAgia, they enabled their CUDA cores to calculate physics. The 8000 series was already on the market when they bought AJ. They did not add hardware to the cards. They added software. But with ray tracing, it may be a bit tougher than that. But on the other hand, there are two other possibilities. Navi may have ray tracing capabilities or Navi may not need them. Here's the thing about AMD GPUs. They are massively parallelized. GPUs in general are a collection of really small cores that all work in tandem. They are already parallelized. I know I think I, I may sound like I'm saying parallelized, you know, like I used to, but I mean parallelized. Pronunciation is hard for me for some reason for a while. That it's so it's, oh, it's been my strong suit. But anyway, AMD ones are better at it than Nvidia ones because they have things like asynchronous compute, and I think Vega has some optimizations with uh, their super duper cache thing that can address a lot of memory more than it has. But is that enough to get them to fit ray tracing in real time somewhere in there? I have no clue. I. I wish it was. I hope it is. But I doubt it a bit because NVIDIA uses two components. It uses the ray tracing cores to actually do the ray tracing and leave the GPU to do the rasterization. And then they use the tensor cores to fill in the blanks because the ray tracing cores are not enough. We may get a version of ray tracing which will not be NVIDIA's one, meaning that developers will need to implement different types of ray tracing. And we're gonna go back a bit to the... Uh, um, the ways that rendering used to work in the olden days where you had to install graphics for your Matrox card, for your Rage card, for your Diamond card, for your S3 card. 
And that wouldn't be very nice. It would be even less nice than uh, having Mant all around. Well, we kind of still do because it's Vulcan essentially. But at least Mantle slash Vulcan do bring performance improvements, at least on AMD hardware. Whereas ray tracing just makes things look a lot better, like super better. But it would also mean that because of this, unless there is enough hardware to go all around to be able to use ray tracing, then it's going to be a niche thing. No one is going to design around it or around how it best performs on one hardware vendor's products. They will most likely veer towards a more generalistic ray tracing implementation, which is the one that was established by Microsoft in partnership with Nvidia, which sort of leads me to believe that maybe the next generation of the Xbox, the Scarlet or what's it called, could possibly be based on Nvidia, since Nvidia already has the shield and there was the rumor that Scarlet may be several consoles with different powers that may interlock or do something with each other, which is kind of like what um, the shield does and what the shield has done for the Switch, which is a Tegra based, uh, an Nvidia Tegra based system. And if Microsoft and Nvidia go together and Sony and AMD go together, and one of them will adopt ray tracing in this form and the other one won't, we're gonna see something we haven't really seen in ages, which is actual graphical differences between games on these platforms. Not from the multi-platform games, they will strive to do the least amount of work possible at configuring the game for two individual platforms. But for the first party ones, they may actually look different, which is something we haven't seen since... Uh, <sighs> Apart from some resolution problems with the Xbox One, we haven't seen in ages, long forgotten ages. Like, wow, we're talking uh, PlayStation versus N64 ages versus the Jaguar. I think the Jaguar was from that age. But up until we get to that point where this may happen, uh, probably won't, but may uh, possibly, we are in the situation where there are currently three graphics cards, three expensive, gra three kind of really expensive of graphics cards that can support ray tracing and mind you this is nvidia ray tracing it is purposely identified in game menu options as nvidia ray tracing the same as you find nvidia hairworks you will not be able to activate it on anything else even if your hardware may support you will not be able to know if for example a vega 64 can do ray tracing because it is coded for Nvidia. There currently is still no sign that ray tracing will exist outside of Nvidia even though it's supposed to be an open general function in DirectX 12 and probably Vulkan. So in conclusion, next year we're gonna get new chips, new GPUs, new CPUs from AMD that are built upon the TSMC 7 nanometer process. There will be no gap in refinement between Nvidia and and AMD. They will be at the same level. There will be discrepancies between AMD and Intel because they have different technologies and AMD may come out a bit ahead because Intel currently has some problems with developing their technology. On the CPU side, we are kind of set. The Ryzen 3000 series, even if it's just a die shrink of this generation and not a new architecture like it will be, is going to improve performance, is going to eat up a lot of market share from Intel. On the GPU department, though we have no clue we do not know a thing about navi yeah there's the rumor of it being the base of the playstation 5 but there are no rumored specifications no rumors about when exactly are we gonna see it just that it will come sometime in 2019 by then Nvidia will have had a really long time on the market alone. It can dictate any price it wants and performance doesn't even matter all that much as long as it works a bit, a tad, slightly higher more so than the previous generation. Yeah, and ray tracing it 
kicks the crap out of it, but they've released no actual proper benchmarks that aren't in 4K. And those were NVIDIA style, uh, you know, graphs. The 4K performance difference can be easily understood by the fact that the NVIDIA 2000 series uses GDDR6 memory, which is faster than GDDR5X, meaning that it'll handle big, big things like 4K a lot better, a lot smoother. We don't know about the actual performance yet. We need to wait for tests for that to happen, but because there's no competition, it doesn't matter. People have already pre-ordered the 2000 series so much that it's sold out in a lot of places already. Had Thomas Harder write that cringeworthy article with When you die and your life flashes before your eyes, you'll wish it as much of it as possible was ray traced. And then they updated it. Oh, it's an opinion. It's not meant to be a shill piece. But you are seeing a lot of NVIDIA shilling currently on the web. People defending the prices. People saying you should buy them right now without any, and I mean zero, performance metrics. People are probably gonna call me a name the shill because of this. But thankfully, they, they did call me an Intel shill when I made the Ryzen video a year ago because I pointed out that on some tests like the crypto graphic thing, Ryzen wasn't that hot. What I'm getting at is that you shouldn't pre order hardware, especially on the recommendation of people with close ties to Nvidia. Wait for the benchmarks to come out and hope to God the AMD releases a new car soon that is better than Vega was. It doesn't have the problem with, oh look, the memory and the CPU die aren't at the same level so there's a lot of gunk there to fill in the gaps. Because whoever assembled these, whoever did the packaging, didn't care and that it has a competitive price and hopefully it has more than one version with capabilities of fighting off the 2000 series. Because if that doesn't happen and we have another year of eh from AMD, do not expect NVIDIA GeForce prices to get any lower soon. They will keep climbing from generation to generation until Intel comes out with their thing and if that's good we may see some competition again. Also hopefully this time the crypto the market boom will not dry up all the AMD cards and won't drive the prices for the ones still on the market up so high that I could have probably sold my RX 480 in mid 2017 and bought a 1070 Ti until those things shut up in price as well in that well. Let's hope it doesn't happen again. So this has been my long-winded rant about what's coming up in the hardware space and as always Take all I've said with a grain of salt. I cannot divine information that does not exist on the internet or in the press or in the industry. Though I am oddly well experienced at divining when games will be released that have not been on the market for years. I mean, I've done it with Monkey Island 3 and now I've done it with Onimusha. I even said in that show, in a month or two, they'll announce a remake. Well, they have. Well, it's not of Onimusha 3, it's of the first one, but they have. And I should start playing the lottery. Goodbye.